Now let's answer the question, which chair is more stable? If your cyclohexane is unsubstituted, the chairs are equally stable. So your unsubstituted cyclo cyclohexane will be rapidly switching back and forth between the two chairs in solution, and it'll spend roughly 50% of its time in either chair. With monosubstituted cyclohexane, now there's a significant difference in the stability of our two chairs. In one chair conformation, the methyl group will occupy an axial position, and in the other chair, our substituent is in the equatorial position. And now, instead of 50-50, we're talking 95% of the time it is equatorial, and only 5% of the time is it axial. Which means, having the bulky substituent in the equatorial position is more stable. And in fact, we could draw our arrows more like that, to indicate that it spends more time in the conformation shown on the right. We'll draw a Newman projection looking down these two bonds to see why one chair is less stable than the other. So here's our Newman projection. This triangle here represents this front carbon. This is the back carbon representing this circle. This triangle here represents this front carbon, and the back carbon where our axial bulky group is, is this circle. Oh, and it looks like I forgot this hydrogen. In any case, you can see there is a gauche interaction there. Now, if we were to look down the same two bonds, that would be looking down this bond and this bond. We get another Newman projection. So this is your other Newman projection. This front carbon here is this carbon here. This front carbon here is this carbon here. The back carbon has that uh, equatorial methyl group, and now you can see it's pointing outward and there is no gauche interaction. So it's that gauche interaction that destabilizes things, and we call this a 1-3 diaxial interaction. One three because it's a gauche interaction between one and three. And it happens on both sides actually. Here's an exercise for you to try real quick. I've got a methyl ethyl cyclohexane where the ethyl group and the methyl group are bonded to the same carbon. In one of the chairs, the methyl group is equatorial sorry, is axial, and the ethyl is equatorial. In the other, the ethyl is axial and the methyl is equatorial. Which one is more stable? Pause and think about it. When you have your answer, resume. So, the answer is the one that has the less bulky axial group is more stable. So, methyl axial versus ethyl axial. And clearly, ethyl is more bulky because it contains more atoms. So, it's more stable to have the methyl axial. Let's look more at some different situations with disubstituted cyclohexane. So let's say we had one chloro, two methyl cyclohexane, and the chloro is on a wedge and the methyl is on a dash. Let's draw the two rings, or the two chairs rather. There's one chair, 
And if we do the ring flip, there's the other. So, clearly the one on the right is more stable because both of my groups are equatorial. All right, what if we put both of our substituents on a wedge? Then our two chairs are like this. So, which of these is less stable? Well, I put it to you that a CH3 is bulkier than a CL. So, it's worse, the structure on the right, that has the methyl group axial. So, this one is more stable. Let's talk a little bit about cis-trans stereoisomers. So we have 1,2-dimethyl cyclohexane, where one of the methyl groups is on a wedge and the other one is on a dash. That is trans, 1, 2, dimethylcyclohexane. Very easy to see in this Hayworth projection. Although actually, the way I drew it, the one on the wedge is clockwise from the one on the dash. So that's a Hayworth projection. Now if we look at the chairs, there's that one. And this one. So on the left, both are equatorial, which is much more stable than having both of them axial. Now, if we had cis 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane, the two chairs would be equally stable. So here's a wedge dash structure and a Hayworth projection of cis 1,2-dimethylcyclohexane. Go ahead and pause your video and draw the two chairs. So there's one of them. Here's the other. So let's see, the one on the left has an axial and an equatorial. The one on the right has an equatorial and an axial. These are equally as stable as each other.
Here's the Hayworth projection for cis-1,3-dimethylcyclohexane, and here's the one for trans. You could do some wedge dash structures as well. What about the chairs? There's the cis. It's got one chair with both of those bulky groups axial. And another chair. Where both of them are equatorial. The trans, we've got axial, equatorial, and equatorial, axial. Those are equally stable. Fifty fifty. Here's trans one four dimethylcyclohexane. Can you draw the chairs? Pause and work it, and then resume when you're ready. So here's one of them. And we do the ring flip. And we get the other. Incidentally, if we change the angle that we're looking at the chair on the left, it could also look like this. If we change the angle that we're looking at the chair on the right, it could also look like this. So it's all a matter of perspective. These are the same. Well, these two are the same and these two are the same. Now, which one is more stable? On the right, because both are equatorial. So that was trans 1,4 dimethylcyclohexane. What about cis? Can you draw two chairs for that? So there's one way to draw my two chairs. If I change my point of view a little bit, I'm going to put one methyl on the rightmost and the other on the leftmost. So there we've shifted our point of view. Those two are the same.
and those two are the same. 